I vividly remember writing a paragraphs long Tumblr post about Soper Pippa law when I was in my early teens. Reader, I'm British. The law was American. This garble and disorganized but passionate and rather successful post was likely sandwiched between gifs of Evan Peters' seminal turn in redacted first season of Show Here that gave me nightmares on a trip to Spain where I fell ill, long and very funny story for another time, and yet another long cussing out of Ryan Murphy for whichever latest screw-up he had made on my beloved show about the musical theatre nerds, completely misunderstanding how television works. This was adolescence, but for us, this was the frontier that would define us. These were the conversations that made us. I was the kid searching out fresh episodes of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. In the UK, mind you, so allegedly extra-legally. And The Colbert Report every morning before school. Staying up until ungodly hours on dodgy websites to salvage American pop culture references from Saturday Night Live. Eyes glued to Twitter and YouTube all day, watching MTV's Decoded and reading now legendary social justice posts on Tumblr before bed. This platform, syntax, movement we all became has toppled giants, but put pressure enough to jail criminals, elect presidents, I'm referring to not the orange one, and hold the abusive to account. We, the decentralized, the Western, the marginalized, the global, the community, the shared knowledge, we, the English speaking and otherwise. I think often how even the corporate language I now interface with daily has bent like a sunflower toward a standard I watched and participated in being made from dirt a decade and change ago with the language long dismissed from thinkers long since misquoted, Hooks, Baldwin, Davis, King, to name a few. All of this between stand tweets for Nicki Minaj and four themed threads of matching icons of those two characters from that show you like so you and your friend can have matching profile pics. At the time, SJW was an adultified term because we were being ushered in and mentored by marginalized millennials and exes who had decided on the internet as the new frontier to build a new and inclusive world for all of us, to build new cultures, to merely decide things were going to be different here. If modern internet accountability culture has an origin, it's in this. Movements once restricted by the stymied flow of information and distaste for the messenger were finally set free. And for those of us who ourselves were marginalized finding refuge on the internet, these generations were our stewards and we learned from them to build ourselves radically anew, proudly different, with no way of turning back. I remember finding it odd that at 23, I felt a nostalgic sat satisfaction in June 2020, when political conversations, analogies and language I'd learned a decade prior, even before Ferguson and Michael Brown, may he rest in peace, were being had so publicly as they finally and wholly hit the mainstream, sometimes to the complete shock of the ears it would fall to. It was then I realized how far behind everyone had become while they were being included and invited and not paying attention to the news. I always asked why my mother was so supportive of these exploits on the internet and she gave similar answers. Nana, look at the quality of the education you're getting. I'll admit, even my cynical ass was confused when these conversations were so terribly responded to in 2020. Again, I forgot the gap. Beyond being busy, there exist people who simply do not want to live in a world they may be compelled to change. But what an education I got. I'm still getting. I count myself among beautiful groups of people still at the cutting edge of love, language, justice, and choosing life. And slowly, the gap seems to close. Or perhaps I surround myself with fewer and fewer people in real life who don't engage in that education. Young TikTok kids, Gen Alpha, know not the world they build under our wing. And I'm hopeful, truly. I think fondly of this as they'll look back at the impact they will have too on the culture. These things are moving so fast. They won't be much older than they are now before they start to see the effects. I am by no means old enough for a retrospective. Ah, I'm 26. But perhaps a pause and a moment to take it in. And my thanks to the generations of thinkers, artists, and activists with imagination enough to get us here. Stay safe, keep your mask on, tell a friend.